Welcome everyone, my name is Joseph Giliotti and you're watching Broadview. Today I'd like to discuss the fascinating phenomenon of near-death experiences. These documented accounts from around the world used to keep me up at night as I read their stories. It gave me hope and it actually shattered my atheism. The thought of what might happen after death causes anxiety in most people. Actually, many avoid the thought altogether or explain it away with science. Many people might scoff at the idea of the continuity of life after death, and others might want to have faith that there is light at the end of the tunnel. But if our consciousness or spirit really does continue on after the death of our physical body and visits wonderful places and reunites with long-lost relatives, it would actually be a pretty nice thing, wouldn't it? So where do people go after death, and what might that look like? Is there any documented evidence that people have experienced this? Today we're going to follow two scientists who have had otherworldly experiences that forever change their perception of reality. Now before we get into it, I'd like to first start by saying I chose these two scientists for today's topic because their stories are the most convincing. First of all, they're both well-known experts in their field, both with strong reputation and credibility. Second. Both of them were atheists who didn't have any religious beliefs, much less belief in reincarnation. Only after a near-death experience were their worldviews changed dramatically. If an ordinary person, a priest or a monk, were to tell you about his near-death experience, you might not easily believe it, would you? Well then, here comes our first testimony, Eben Alexander III. Eben, an American authoritative neurosurgeon, received his professional training at the prestigious Duke University. He served as a surgeon and taught at Harvard University. He devoted his life to the study of brain science. He worked with many patients who had actually experienced near-death experiences, but he regarded them as hallucinations caused by neural crosstalk in the human brain, and he often asserted that he didn't believe in the existence of life after death. However, Eben's worldview was turned upside down in 2008. On the night of November 10th that year, Eben was sleeping as usual. At around 3 or 4 a.m., he suddenly felt severe pain in his back and head. He struggled to sit up but couldn't, and he collapsed into his bed and fell into a coma. His wife was sleeping next to him but didn't hear anything. Two hours later, she woke up to find him unresponsive and she called for an ambulance. The hospital confirmed that he had a very rare but very dangerous infectious disease, acute bacterial meningeal encephalitis. It has a mortality rate of over 90%, with many patients dying within hours. Although doctors had done their best to save Eben, he was still in a coma. They said that if Eben couldn't wake up within one week, he would basically be stuck in a vegetative state. Miraculously, Eben woke up on the seventh day and was left with no lasting side effects, making a full recovery. The first thing that Eben did after being discharged was to return immediately to the hospital to pull up all the data from his resuscitation process. Once he finished reviewing the data, everything he knew about the world seemed to crumble. He said that what he saw while comatose couldn't be explained by science. So what exactly did he experience? Eben said that in the coma, he found himself in a dark space, surrounded by writhing walls. There were blood vessels within the walls, much like human organs. He felt like a baby returning to his mother's womb. At first, he was a little scared. Then a dazzling light suddenly shone down and enveloped him. He entered a bright tunnel and came out into a world he'd never seen before. Now in this world he was flying. He soared through the air with comfort, vaguely hearing a pleasing melody similar to music one might hear in church. As he flew by a beach, he saw a young lady wearing a white dress, who he didn't recognize. The lady told him, There are still so many people who love you in that world. You better go back. After speaking, she disappeared. He wondered who she was. But after that, he flew to two other worlds, each one different and unique from the others. Then he passed through a dark tunnel and returned to the real world. He saw himself laying unconscious in bed. His family was all praying around him. As soon as he decided to return to his body, he woke up. Initially, he thought he was hallucinating. But after reading the resuscitation data from the hospital, he was stunned. At that time, he had no brain wave activity because of the swelling of his brain. According to common medical knowledge, people aren't able to have any memories, dreams, or hallucinations in such a state. But what he had experienced was so vivid, so he came to the conclusion that these scenes were definitely not his brain's own activity. Then there was only one explanation. It was really his soul that experienced all of this. Then something else happened, which convinced Eben even more of this theory. The story began with his birth. Eben was adopted by the Alexander family, 
and he had met his biological parents just a year before falling ill. His biological parents later gave birth to a son and a daughter, Eben's younger siblings. The sister died in a car accident in 1998, and Eben never did meet her. One year after his near-death experience, his biological parents sent him a letter with a picture of his sister. He was shocked when he saw the photo. The person in the photo was the lady he met on the beach. This photo confirmed to him that what he saw in his coma was definitely not a hallucination because his sister's face and voice didn't exist in his memory. After that, Eben felt that his life became particularly meaningful and understood that death was not the end of life, but only the beginning of another journey. He became more appreciative of life and came to no longer fear or dread death itself. He gave up his career as a doctor and became a writer. In 2012, he wrote a book about his experience called Proof of Heaven, a neurosurgeon's journey into the afterlife. Once the book was published, it caused a sensation in the international publishing world. Within a month, rights had been sold to 35 countries, including the UK, Germany, the Netherlands, Russia, and Australia, and sold an incredible 1 million sales in the United States. Eben said he was not denying science, but just telling people his real experience, which he believed was his duty. He hopes that one day in the future he will be able to explain this phenomenon scientifically and that before the day comes, we shouldn't stubbornly deny the existence of an afterlife as he had done before. Thanks for listening today, guys. There's a part two to this. Be sure to watch and click on to the next video, and I'll see you then.